What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE. B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. We got, we're older now, you know, two years ago, we had a bunch of freshmen and now these guys, we got four of those guys. We had seven freshmen and eight newcomers when I first got here. Mm -hmm. Four of those guys are still here. So they're four juniors. And so they're older, mature, they know the program. And then we brought in, you know, influx of uh, transfers, junior college. And the four core guys kind of just gets those guys up to speed on what we do, uh, our language, our culture, how we work, how we work together. And uh, it's been great. It's been really good. And then, you know, uh, Alan Gene Rose, who's been our probably one of our better players this year, like one of the better players in the league. I coached him his first two years when I was at Fairfield. He was a freshman, sophomore at Fairfield. So when I left, you know, we always kept in touch with whatever. I would have sent him a text, good job, or whatever. He would always text me or call me, Coach Goodwin, or whatever. So he put his name in the portal, and he's leaving Fairfield, who was, like, you know, my second home because the head coach at Fairfield at the time was my good friend of mine. So when he put his name in, I called, you know, my old boss, and we talked or whatever. He said, yeah, he'd be great for you guys or whatever, and ended up getting him. And he's been really, really – he's been good. He's, he can score it inside. He can step outside and shoot. He can guard one through four, sometimes even playing at a small ball five. So it's been uh, the, the transfers. He's been really, really good for us. And Coach, man, for you, man, seeing this growth from, from year one to year, to year three, like you said, having guys been in your system. And this, this crazy world of the portal NIL, man, keep retaining your own guys the job for themselves because they play really well. The mid, the high mid majors and the group of five, I mean, they'll poach them. So by having to re-recruit your own guys and keep them happy all the time. That's what they don't get pushed. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> you know what? That, that That's really, really hard. And I, I'm sure it's hard for a lot of coaches to like, you're always, you know, you you, you get on a guy too much, he's going to go to the portal. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. 
So what I tell our guys, I, I'm really up front with them. I say, hey, you can talk to our guys on a, on a team who's been here for three years. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to push you. The staff's going to push you. But we play a really good brand of basketball. I'm a glass half full guy. I'm always, like, you know, always happy. Like sometimes the assistant's always telling me, Pat, you got to go in there with a main a mean mug and, and get be pissed off at him a little bit. And so part of my part of our personality, the way we are as a group, as a staff and a group, is uh, attractive. So very rarely, you know, guys know if I'm getting on them, I'm getting on them because it's only going to help them. And that's how we've been able to keep guys. And obviously we lost, we lost two really key players from our first class. One kid, uh, Andre Snotty was a double, double guy last year for us. He ended up leaving. And then uh, Trenton McLaughlin left after the first year. He's a leading scorer for Northern Arizona right now. So those two guys really, really were big losses for us. But, you know, the core guys, they, they, they into it. And then the guys we brought in, once they get here, and I tell them, I said, we're not going to wow you with uh, some great palatial facilities or we're not flying on a first class or on a private jet. But what, you, what you're going to really like is the brand of basketball we play. We, we really sh- we try to share the ball. We play hard defense. We share the ball. Everybody gets a touch. If you're open, we want you to shoot it. Um, you, you don't have to look over your shoulder offensively. You can be aggressive. You know, we tell these guys all, all – all those things. The only thing I want you to do is share it. If somebody's open, let's give up a good shot to get a great shot. Otherwise, play hard, and you're going to really like it here. And then socially in, in Connecticut, we're in the central part of the state. So we're in like we're hour and 40 minutes from New York City, an hour 15 from Boston. Um, New Haven is 30 minutes away. So we got some nice cities around. So it's a pretty good atmosphere. So you, you come to central Connecticut, you're going to have a, a – a really good experience. And then, you know, there was a, a tweet yesterday that we're leading the conference in attendance. So one thing we do is we have a strong uh, campus life, student life on campus. And so we get a lot of students coming to our games. So, uh, you know, it's a great atmosphere playing here at home. And I think guys really appreciate that. They like that. So that's what's been happening. That's how we've been able to keep those guys and attract some of the transfer guys. And Pat, man, you know, in non league play, you went, you got six wins not in non league, which is great for a, a school at the NEC who have to play five games, go on the road a lot. So, talk about getting them six wins in non league play, give me a foundation for doing it in NEC right now. Yeah, you know, like in non league, like you said, we got to, we're going to play three, four bye games a year. Everybody in our league is going to do that. And, uh, and, and what happens, and it's been a process, it's just like, a, you can see it slowly moving. So we've played UMass, UConn, you know, uh, Rutgers, teams like that, and, you know, probably got our head beating pretty good by those teams. And as the guys are getting older or whatever, I'm like, fellas, they're no – I said, I think we're just as skilled as the guys at the, at that level. They might be a little longer. It might be a bigger, a little more athletic, but we're just as skilled. And if we place a smart basketball game, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. So we can't get overwhelmed or, or get discouraged by their size and their athleticism. You got to use our head more when we play those type of games. And so, as we go forward, we we, uh, we you know opened up with Rhode Island, and we were in the game for the first half a lot. A lot of the first half came back and really got the game within striking distance, and they ended up beating us on the stretch. And uh, then we had uh, Quinnipiac, which is like our level. They used to be in our league. And our game, we were down. We came back right in the game down the stretch. So you can just tell our guys were, like, getting more and more confidence. And we were losing those games. We were getting more and more confidence. What helped us a lot, too, is we played a couple non-D1 games. So I say this all the time. It doesn't matter if you're playing, you know, uh, a, a Division One high major team or a non-D1. When you win a game, you just feel better. The guys feel better. Practice is better. You just feel it. You can feel the energy. So a couple of non D ones gave us a little bit of more, a little bit of zip. And then um, we go to UMass this year, and UMass just handed it to us. They the second half, I felt helpless. I was like, I was I was embarrassed. 
uh, embarrassing by the way we played. It was just embarrassing. So we had, I think, five or six days off before our next game. And I, I saw Frank Martin after that. I saw him at a, at a, a tournament. We were talking. I said, Frank, your game, your, our game versus you guys woke us up because we went three or four days, I call it three or four days in practice of hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> we worked on defense, rebounding, toughness, diving for loose balls, everything. And that game, that loss kind of woke us up and propelled us to, to go up and beat, win at UMass Lowell, which had a 20-game home winning streak. And um, we've had some some good road wins at, in, in the non-conference part of the, the year because of that UMass loss and the and the, the subsequent practice after that UMass loss. So, don't, don't, you know, and we, we go to Fordham right before Christmas. We lose at home to Northeastern. Big game up in the second half. They make some plays down the stretch. We lose the game. We have a, uh, a day off, and we have to get on a bus, and we have a noon game versus Fordham, at Fordham. And we go up to Fordham, and these guys – went to work and we, we were we were mad about the northeastern game got to Fordham and these guys played a great game our defense was really good Fordham you know they, they pressure you and they change defenses our offense offensively we were really poised made big time decisions on the stretch and we won on the road and uh that really helped us in the non-conference gave us a lot of confidence no doubt man Fordham was tough to play with over in the Bronx there man Keith Ergo is right. energy <laughs> He always got oh, he, you, Keith, Keith is great, man. Keith, I mean, he he they're hard to play, man, because they they change so many defenses. Yeah, so uh, he's done a good job of Fordham, really good job. No doubt, man. You know what? You playing in them close games, you play the impact, man. Like I feel like it's gonna help you now in February, and March, because you know you and I both. You really can't simulate late game scenarios and practice like with real speed, right? So you only do that by playing real games. So you can then go back to the right. film and kind of evaluate, point out things with execute better when you have open shot here or we go black out here or diving on the floor here. So about that piece of it, man, man, playing close games so you can get that experience down. So with February and March, when it really count, man, you, you already been there. Right, right. Well, I'll talk about the UMass Lowell game and the Fordham game. Both of those guys, uh, both of those games came right down to the wire and, and, and the North piece again really they all came down to the wire we and and two of those three games we we executed on the defensive end so we got key stops like you said key box outs loose balls long rebounds we were able to get stops in those games and then uh we kind of you know our point guard Jordan Jones is a guy we got he's a D2 transfer from South Carolina uh we kind of found him like he he he's from the my, my hometown and we found him, and, and we, we talk about it. What gives him – he has a little clutch gene about him. I said, what makes him so clutch? And the guys on our team right now have most of the time been role players. Most of the guys on the team have been role players. Jordan came from a D2 spot where he was the man. So UMass Lowell game, we get tied game, I think, like maybe – 18 seconds ago, we would have a silent out of bounds play. We wouldn't have play and we get the ball to Jordan. He makes a big time three to win the game for us. Um, and then in the Fordham game, you know, a couple of weeks later in, at Fordham, he takes over in the second half. He gets 18 points in the second half, just really control the game with his, his energy, his decision making and shot making. And uh, so he's given us a guy, sort of like a go to guy. Alan Gene Rose does a good job. We can give him the ball. He can get it in the post. Like I said, he can get open threes and rhythm. Um, he can take people off the dribble. But, like, I think clutch, crunch time, Jordan Jones has been a guy that really just kind of steps up big. He's done it a lot at the D2 level. So he's comfortable having the ball in his hand and making a play or making decisions for us. So that, that, that's, like you said, that's a big, big part for us. We uh we just had a game at home versus Wagner. We were down nine with three forty six to go in the game, and our defense was tremendous. The last three forty six to go, we come back and win the game in overtime. And again, Jordan Jones kind of made some big plays for us down the stretch to help us win that game. And Pat, so it does help. In, it, it does help in uh, like you said in, in January, February, March.
No doubt, man. Having a guy who can score on all three levels of the, of the floor, too, man, and get down here to be a bunch of three pointers, call it defense conflict, man. You know, we all we all know we want to call it defense conflict. So what we're going to right. do, we're going to close out hard, we're going to close short, or what we're going to do, and we're going to get him in rotation and get some better shots. So having a guy who can call that conflict on all three levels, man, very, very important, especially when you in a tournament game when it's close, second, second, second half. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we, we we need that. We need some guys with that little ice water in their name. No doubt, bro. And also, you're doing good on the glass, too, man. And you and I both know, man, defended, defended, defended don't end until you get the rebound. So, go about the rebound the ball, get the ball out of position, uh, getting out quick, man, getting on the go, and also offensively, crashing gas with, with, with your front court, getting second chances on that end of the floor, too, my brother. Right, right. You know, um, so, like, two years ago, when we got, the, when we got here, uh, we were one of the probably one of the worst teams in the league in rebounding, and we started doing box out drills every day. Even like a lot of teams might do them in the preseason or in the non conference part, and they kind of back off during the season. And you know, we started it and we just kept going with it. So, we do some type of box out drill three, four times a week in practice. And you know, I know guys are worried about injuries. We uh, we think we, we tell our guys that if you're physical and you're aggressive, you won't get hurt. So they've done a good job, and it's like tracking up every every game. I'm talking about rebound, rebound, rebound. So we're num- we're the number one team rebounding team in the league, and like you said, it helps when you play a really good defense, and a team gets an offensive rebound. That's demoralizing. So we want to get that that we want to get them one shot. So you're gonna work hard on D, work hard on D. If they miss it, we have to get the rebound. And when you look at our stat sheet. We don't have one guy getting nine or eight or what. We got a, a bunch of guys getting five, four. I mean, I think three guys getting four rebounds. Somebody getting five, but it's a it's a collective effort, a group effort, and I, I just tells you all these guys are really boxing out, and getting two hands on the ball, and then offensively, um, you know, I haven't even talked about Kellen Amos. Kellen Amos was our best player last year, and got off to a slow start shooting the ball, but now recently starting to. to a tick up a little bit. And part of it is, I said, Kellen, you got to get a couple extra buckets going to the offensive glass. No, he's a six, seven high flyer. So he just, it's a, you know, we got a four and a five man, pretty big and pretty athletic. This guy is probably just more athletic than all of them. And now we get him consistently crashing. It gives us our third guy on the glass. So it does help when we get those offensive rebounds. And I always tell him, if you can put it right back, put it back in, if you don't have it, Let's kick it out. Let's get it moving real quick, and let's see if we can get something quick. And the guys have done a good job of doing of offensive rebound and defensive rebound. And, you know, to all together, even rebounding. We're, we're the number one rebounding team in our league, which I'm proud of, and the guys are proud of it because we do we do some rebounding almost every day. Yeah, that's, that's telling me, y'all, you tough as heck. You know that, brother. You tough as heck, man. Yeah. <laughs> and also, man, you at at, at the end of this with you, bro. Uh, talk about being active defensively, man. Getting those front outs, those deals, easy baskets to your own. So on nights when you don't have jumpers going down, that defense yeah. has to answer. We're in the day for you to win the game for you, my brother. Yeah, yeah. Getting it, you know, like you said. So like when on, on the uh, on the keys to the game, almost every game we play, we want to stop, get the stop, get a rebound, and we want to push the ball. And we talk about getting change in size of the flow with the ball in transition. It's really hard to guard because teams are good teams are getting back. They're in transition. They're stopping the ball. We want that ball moving in transition because when we get the ball moving in transition, we're getting closeouts while guys are retreating back and then we want to attack those closeouts. So, yeah, we try to get that ball up the court quick, cross the floor, attack closeouts, get into the paint. If we can shoot, shoot it in the paint, shoot it. If we don't have it, we're kicking it out and we're getting our ball popping. So uh, that's been really good for us too. That, that's If you look at our numbers on Synergy, transition-wise, we're excellent. We're rated excellent in transition because we do a lot of good things in the transition part of it. Um, and then we get it, we settle in a half court, again, with, with Jordan Jones being a, such a good point guard, strong, he can get us into things. And he can the, the thing about like having good floor, you know this having good floor generals, at the end of the clock, you gotta get guys who can get into the paint. No and doubt. if he can he can get into the paint, now he can make things he can finish it or he can kick it and make things happen. So he's been great at that. And that really, really helps our offense. 
And Pat, last one for you, man. You got St. Francis from Pennsylvania coming in. Uh, you got them on tomorrow. So tell me about what some of the guys on film so far, my brother. Yeah, St. Francis, man. You know they have uh, they they have a freshman, Elijah Wilborn, great player. He's from twenty minutes away, and so he's gonna have a whole crowd of people in here tomorrow. He's probably gonna end up being rookie of the year. Or I, I know he's on the all rookie team, but he's probably gonna be rookie of the year. He's uh, I think he's averaging uh 13 and 9 in the league right now so he's doing a good job for those guys so they're well coached they're a really really good offensive team they push the ball at you we're gonna have to do a good job to get back in transition defense they're uh first in the league in offensive rebounders we're gonna have to box them out they do a good job of boxing out of, of crashing the glass and um they have another guard Carlos Lopez who's a shooter who had 21 on us out there uh, I think he made five or six threes out there. So we're going to have to limit his touches, especially in transition, because he's got a quick release. Uh, and if you give him a little little light, he can knock it in. So we're going to have to guard the three-point line. We're going to have to keep Wilborn off the glass. Got to get back in transition. And then offensively, we're going to have to move and share that basketball. If we do that consistently tomorrow night, we give ourselves a chance to win. Well, Pat, you almost say I'm claiming that for you, man. I hope we talk about again in March. After you won that tournament, you go to the big dance, brother. You deserve oh, it, man. man. All the hard work you did, my brother. Hope we had that chat that chat in a month from now, though. Boss, man, I hope you're right, man. I, I got my fingers crossed, man. We're going to keep working and see what happens. I appreciate no, it. No doubt, my brother. Anytime, my guy. All right. You take care. we Will do, bro. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.